Hey, Joe from Coding Blocks, back at it again. Um, this time I wanted to show you Markov chains. If uh, you're not familiar with Markov chains, they are pretty cool. Uh, let me show you a nice page I found. Now, um, the math is way over he my head, and uh, I have never even coded from scratch, so I don't know a whole lot about it, but um, basically the gist of it is that you feed in some data, and then it uses the data that you fed in to figure out kind of the probabilities of going from say one point in that data to the next and it uses that to generate more data so the idea is that the more data you feed it the more realistic output is generated afterwards and so if you google around like you'll see markov chains for just about anything um, i bet there's a, a trump markov chain generator that uh, you know whatever took in a bunch of stuff and make stuff that looks, you know, fairly possible, which is pretty cool. So, let's make one. So I'm going to remember to make a dir, and remember to go there. Now, last time we talked about Yemen, and uh, I'm going to do it again. So, uh, I already installed the the package, so I'm cheating a little bit. But the one I'm going with this time is. Uh, Browserify. So what Browserify is, is a technology that allows you to utilize uh, require statements. So like require functions, um, which is kind of like a no convention for bringing in modules and lets me do that stuff on the client side. So uh, once again, I'm making just a static website that uh, does some cool stuff with JavaScript. And Umin is a great way to set that up. And if you don't know about Umin, you should go watch the last video for um, just some basic rundown on that. So, while well, that's going on, I'm going to open up code. And I'm going to open up my folder. And this thing is still running, but I have some of the stuff that uh, I need already. So it's something to kind of modify this stuff, but um, let's go ahead and let that go on. But in the meantime, let's take a look at Bootstrap. So last time we saw uh, created a template that used Bootstrap, which is just a, a great toolkit for um, creating cool looking websites. And so um, some of my favorite things about it is that uh, it's got really nice documentation. So if you want to say, I don't know, make a button group, then it's got nice conventions and nice examples of how to do that in a way that looks nice and consistent with everything else. Um, it's also got a grid. So it's really easy to kind of align stuff and just make stuff look nice. And it's nice to start with a, a nice template. So, you know, once again, if you don't know much about HTML or JavaScript, you should probably, you know, spend some time in Notepad and uh, suffer just like, you know, you're supposed to, I guess. Um, but if you want to make something cool while you're watching Netflix, then this is something that is worth checking out. And let's see if we're done. All right. so. One thing I will mention is that I had a problem with this particular um, generator. So if we run gulp, we'll probably see some sort of error. Yep. And um, I did a little, um, my friend calls it the granny method, basically commenting stuff out and trying to figure out what's going on and, and uh, looking at the stack trace, which is not very helpful in this case. But I figured out a really hacky way of getting around the problem. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Uh, if I remember where, there's a gulp task. Browserify, and I didn't look into this, but I do know that this will get us past the hurdle. So I changed requires to external just to match the task uh, that did work, and I took the one that didn't and made it more like it. So whatever. Um, I'm just trying to have some fun here. So let's keep it simple. All right, and it popped it up in on the monitor, but here's the site that we're starting with. So pretty nice, and we've got a nice pipeline running. So let's go back over here, open up our index.html. Now what I'm thinking here um, is just for starters, um, going with text. So I want a big text area for input, one for output, and then maybe a button that'll let us generate. So let's start by trimming out the stuff we don't want from that file. I don't care about Jumbotron. Header sounds kind of nice. Um, Markov chains. Alright. And let's 
let's just get rid of all this stuff. So we're trying to keep things quick here and get you set up with a, a jumping off point. But if you look in the show notes for this, show notes, uh, in the description for this video, you'll see links to um, some code that's a little bit more fleshed out and just more polished version of this, as well as links to a website where you can actually kind of mess around and have fun with it. And um, you can uh, have even more of a jumping off point if you just download the code, clone it, and maybe we'll do that in one of these videos. But um, for now, I'll show you one of my favorite things about uh, Bootstrap is I can say Bootstrap text area and get some examples really quickly. Those aren't text areas. This is what I'm looking for. So, I want two of these guys. One labeled input. And we're gonna change the, the ID. We're gonna keep things real simple. Just to focus on core competency. Alright, so that looks pretty good. And we want a button, and this is how lazy I am. Bootstrap button. And I'm just going to grab the first example. You can tell I've done this before. All right, spaces over tabs, woo! Generate, exclamation point. And let's give this an ID to uh, generate, sure. All right, well, let's go ahead and make sure this stuff is actually happening. And this is not the right window, there we go. It automatically refreshed because human is awesome. And this is what we got. So, now, I always forget the shortcut and I don't want to pop my mail open again. I'm just terrible. Uh, for some reason, the Mac keyboard shortcuts just do not jive with me. All right, I think that's fine. Okay, so everything's looking good there. So um, let's go over here, and um, there's a bunch of different options for where to put stuff, how to you know arrange my code. But I'm just going to do the simplest thing to just kind of get the ball rolling. So over here. I'm pretty sure we have jQuery. Yep. Set up uh, because of Bootstrap. So, uh, what I want to do is when someone clicks the generate button on click, I want to have a function that does mark copy stuff. And I actually forgot to mention most important part to busy babbling. So um, I already did a Google for Marco chains in NPM and I found that there's a couple different libraries and um, they each have their pros and cons. Uh, this one I thought was the simplest so we're just going to go with that uh, to start with. And so what I want to do is over here ugh, I'm going to cheat uh, run that in the background. Okay, so uh, npm install dash dash save and I'm not doing a G here so it's uh, not doing it globally. It's going to download a copy of this library and pop it into my node modules folder over here. I'm afraid to open that because it's going to be huge. Alright, so we got it now. If we go back over here um, that's reading a file. I just want to take it in from a text input. So we're just going to do this really, really simply. So, all right. And it's creating a Markov chain, but I actually need to require it. And this is where BrowserPy comes in. Um, the whole reason I did this whole, this particular template, the whole reason that um, we mess with that build problem is just so we could require a node package and use it in a browser. So let's take a look here. So we installed the package. Now we're using uh, Browserify to fetch the content of that module. And what we want to do is grab the input data 
yay jQuery. Is it? I think it's Val. We'll find out. And we'll feed it to our Markov chain. We're gonna just gonna create a new one every time. Every time you hit the button, output data equals the ID of outputs value. Oops, it's not right. We don't actually need a reference here. So we already passed the data. We don't need to add anything separately. We don't care about that. I don't think that five really matters. Um, let's just go ahead and leave for now. We can take a quick peek at the documentation and see what happens here. So uh, let's take a look what's going on. So when you click the generate button, we're going to grab the input data from the text file. We're going to create a new markup chain with that input data. And we are going to in five it and then process it to generate uh, text. So we're going to set that text into that uh, output text area. So let's take a look over here quickly and figure out what in does. String integer function generate words until a sentence length matches int or can no longer find words to change. Can I just not pass anything? There's an example where it doesn't doesn't take any input, so I'm just going to assume that's okay. And I'm assuming that that means it's just going to generate output until it, uh, it reaches the end of a, a chain, basically. Um, so if we go over here, uh, dollar sign is not defined. Dang it! So I could do this the old-fashioned way: document dot element get ID that sort of stuff. I'm totally going to cheat here and just grab jQuery from CDN because they know I have it. They have it. Uh, if I shirt. So I'm going to grab the script tag and I'm just going to drop it. Lazy, lazy, lazy. Let's see what else I got in here. Make sure I put it in a good spot. Vendor.js, main.js, all right. So I'm just going to drop that in there. And let's see how this goes. All right. OK, I don't know if anything happened here. All right. Sigh. So let's go back over to our app. And throw a debugger here and make sure we did everything. And you know what's even easier than that is just copying this out. This is something I'm a big fan of doing when it's just a simple little thing. So now I know this is hooked up. If I click generate, I can see there's a problem. So uh, I see the problem, but I'll show you how I figured it out. So if I run this little command here, I'm not going to get anything. And that's because I forgot the pound symbol. All right, so rather than this whole thing again. Oops, there we go. Hit my debugger. So um, I think it might be working right now. So let's go ahead and grab some text here. So what I'm going to do just for fun is uh, look at the uh, whatever the latest coding blocks uh, article is. If our site loads, that's not good. Might be cutting this video early. <laughs> Look at the New Yorker, something that has a lot of text. Uh, let's see if I can find a, a story pretty quickly here. This is some text shirt. All right, and now we got lots of words. All right, so I'm going to grab this text, and I'm not going to worry too much about what's going on here. Paste it in, and now when I generate. What it did is it took text out of here, uh, took like a word, and figured out statistically what's a, a fairly likely word to follow it, and then repeat until it um, runs to an end. So 
versions of its parts and as many serial related Google hits as Koi and run keyword searches rather than they held 57% of typical requests. So it's nonsensical, but it looks like English, right? That's pretty cool. So if we generate again, still got the debugger in there, um, you'll see it just keeps on creating different sentences, which is really cool. So that's pretty neat. Uh, and the more data you feed it, the better it gets. Um, pasting it twice obviously isn't going to work because it's just going to keep the same ratio. But if I keep finding like New Yorker articles and dumping in here, then the text that I generate is going to look like New York articles. If I go through Hacker News and grab the top 10 stories and paste all the text in here, then I'm going to get stuff that roughly looks like Hacker News articles. And you can see there's a lot of work you can do. Like you could um, have it always start with the first of a sentence uh, for the start of a chain. Um, you could do a better job with looking at punctuation. Um, you know, that's all stuff you can kind of add on later, but this is the gist of it, which is pretty cool. So if you wanted to make a Twitter bot or something that kind of, you know, took Trump tweets and made more Trump tweets, then that's something cool you could do. And there's a lot of people doing stuff like that. I bet there's probably packages for Markov bots, actually. Let's take a look for that. I should have said Twitter bots. There you go. So there's some Twitter bots that are doing exactly that, which is pretty cool. So last thing I wanted to show you, I'm not actually going to do this um, because we're running out of time here. But one thing that's really cool, and I kind of alluded to earlier, is that you can use Markov chains for more than just text. So if we look at some of these other libraries, uh, here's a really good example of one. So with this library, you can pass in an array. And in this example, um, and this is just an example, temperature hot, weather sunny. They feed it weather data, and then they generate realistic looking weather data. So um, that's really cool, right? And um, I don't know if, how in depth they go in here, but theoretically, because it's always based on the data that you pass it in, you shouldn't have the kind of wild swings you would have if you just tried to do this um, with basic randomness. So you won't have like hot day, cold day, hot day, cold day, hot day, cold day. It should kind of follow the rough curves uh, in the same way that your input data did. And you can also do this with stock market data or um, lots of other stuff. And so it's just a cool way of generating data based on other data. So you can get really creative with that. And so maybe I'll take this example and polish it up a little bit more, show you some of the other cool stuff you can do. And I'll have a link in the description here and a blog post all about it. So you should check it out and have some fun with this. All right, signing off.